Hi guys, it's Tamara. I'm coming back with another video. Today is Friday, and so we're gonna end our conversation um, about personality traits and relationships. We're gonna end this uh, today, and then we're gonna start up on Monday with the negative effects of parental mental health on adult children. So we're gonna start that topic. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel for those who are subscribed. And for those who are not, I encourage you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button over here on the, on the left side so that you can stick around with us as we talk about trauma and relationships and a lot of, of um, situations and experiences that a lot of people, including myself, have experienced or seen vicariously. So I encourage you to go ahead and join our community um, as we learn and explore and grow from, from our conversations. So today's topic is going to be about the avoidant personality. I actually have a client in another country. Um, he lives in the UK and then I also have a client in Canada uh, and both of these individuals uh, talk to me for consultation regarding how to manage and how to deal with a loved one who seems to be avoidant. One of the things that they um, have come to me with is how do I deal with an individual who either aggresses me, right? They, they come towards me in an aggressive, intimidating, frightening way, or how do I deal with somebody who completely pulls back from me, shuts down, refuses to talk, gaslights me and stonewalls what do i do and so these opposing uh, personality traits uh is really what i see the most of in my practice i always see either somebody who's the aggressor and the other individual who is the victim cannot tolerate it or on the other side, I see somebody who's avoiding personality and they pull away, lock down, shut down and won't say or do anything. Both of those kind of personalities are complicated. So I want to talk a little bit about the avoiding personality, though. And uh, as we move along during this month, we'll talk a little bit more about the aggressive personality. But for today, we're going to talk about the avoidant personality. Cool. So let's just go ahead and jump in, all right? So what is an avoidant personality? Well, let me just define what a personality disorder is. I'm going to put up here a video that I did about personality disorders. It's more so about sociopaths and um, the neurology of personality disorders. Um, but let me just quickly define that for you, all right? So personality disorders are not mental illnesses. They are not um, uh, symptoms that can be treated with medication or counseling. A personality disorder is basically reflective of two things, biology and genes and environment, all right? So biology and genes and environment. These two things together, intermixed together with an invalidating environment and an, ex and an exposure, <laughs> That's a tongue twister. And exposure to negative things in the environment, um, including a negative parent-child relationship, can result in a personality disorder. Okay, so a personality disorder needs to be conceptualized as a pervasive, chronic, long-term condition that really is a trait right? It's something that you've been born with. It's part of your temperament, part of your makeup as an individual. It is not an illness to where you can medicate it or counsel it away. The individual has very ingrained ways that they think and perceive life. They think about and perceive life, okay? So an avoidant personality does this, okay? They avoid. That's very, that's very explainable, right? They avoid, but what do they avoid? Well, they avoid the things that they are afraid of. And some of the things that they're afraid of includes rejection, loss, an unbearable transition, ridicule, uh, judgment, uh, high expectations that they feel they cannot reach. Uh, they also like to avoid responsibility because it's very difficult. Right. An avoidant personality kind of has a lot of dependencies. They have this big hole in their heart and in their soul, which is fear. Right. They, they don't have the capacity, not that they don't want to, but it's just that they don't have the capacity to be bold enough and courageous enough 
to engage with other people. It's not that they don't want to, right? They're not antisocial. They don't want to be lonely. They want to be included, but their fear of ridicule and persecution and critiques and high expectations that they can't meet, right? All of those things causes them to completely back away from you, shut down and don't deal with anything, right? Now, this individual also has a preoccupation, and I'm going to put the def definition of a preoccupation over here. They have a constant, obsessive preoccupation with being rejected, uh, critiqued, and, and judged, okay? That's a preoccupation. There is also an unwillingness to engage because of this fear, right? They, they can engage, but there is an unwillingness to because they don't wanna to have to deal with all the things that comes with most human beings, right? Judgment, belief systems, racism, discrimination, prejudice, right? Um, sexism, classism, they don't wanna deal with any of that. So they avoid it, right? It's a whole lot, it's a whole lot better to avoid it. If they have this internal hole of, you know, that's filled with fear, then they're gonna run away because they think they're inadequate in the first place, right? They don't think that they have the ability to rise to everybody else's expectations of them. So as a result, they go away and they hide, okay? So let me give you some tips on how to deal with somebody who's like this. The number one tip that I encourage you to follow is not to force them, right? You don't wanna force somebody who's an avoidant personality into engaging because the very reason why they're not engaging is fear. They don't wanna deal with being forced to do anything because they have an internal feeling of inadequacy, all right? So don't force them. Number two, these kind of romantic relationships, right, can be difficult because your, your spouse is avoiding you. Your spouse is avoiding intimacy and closeness and conversation. And anything that has to bring you both into a, a common place, they may avoid that. So in romantic relationships or friendships, I should add in there as well, I encourage you to give the person ultimatums, right? If you don't start doing this, I'm going to have to do this, right? Help them see that every time they make a decision, their decision is determining the outcome of that relationship, right? So if you decide to avoid me when I need to talk to you, then we're getting closer to divorce because we can't have a relationship like this. We can't have a marriage like this, okay? Number three, if you feel trapped, get out. I encourage you to get out. There's no reason why you have to stay. There's no reason why you have to stay involved with an individual who is avoiding you, right? They have a pervasive, chronic a condition that's going to be difficult to counsel. The only reason why people with avoiding personality disorder get help is because a loved one, a boss, or a friend said, look, the relationship's over, the job is over if you don't get help, right? So the only reason they get help is because somebody else tells them they need help. Other than that, they're not going to do it, all right? Um, approach the individual with tact in grace okay you don't need to curse at them you don't need to yell and shout you don't need to belittle them you don't need to bring up embarrassing things from the past because you're not pulling them out that way you're actually causing them to completely shut down and run away run the opposite direction all right so you want to approach them with grace and tact you also want to be mindful of their frame of reference. And what I mean by that is their experience, right? Be mindful that they may have had some previous trauma. They may have had some previous experiences that causes them to run the opposite direction, all right? So just be mindful of the frame of reference. What are they working with? What have they always worked with? What are they used to, right? Um, why are they acting this way? What makes them tick this way? Is it a previous experience? Is it a bad parent-child relationship? What is it? Okay, so be mindful of their frame of reference. The last thing that I wanna give you is, you know, kind of accept and, and plant the seed in your mind that if it doesn't work out, there's nothing to save, right? If it doesn't work out, there's nothing for you to try to salvage or save. It's, it's just, it's an end, uh, it's an end of the road, I guess I should say, right? It's the end of the relationship, move on. You may not want to, that may be your last resort option, that may be something that you haven't even considered yet. But I do wanna tell you, these individuals are very difficult to deal with. Again, this is not a mental illness. It's a personality. So when you're dealing with somebody who has a personality versus a mental illness, the personality is gonna be a whole lot harder to change, 
right? Then a mental illness. A mental illness can be medicated, counseled, and it can actually change and heal over time. A personality disorder is way, way, way more temperamental. It's way more difficult. It's pervasive, and it may or may not change. There's really no predictability with a personality disorder. It could change. It could not change. It may, you know, change in intensity, whatever. Uh, but mental illnesses are a lot easier to tackle than personality disorders, right? So keep that in mind when you're dealing with an avoidant personality, uh, whether that's a parent, a romantic relationship, a boss, you really are dealing with a complicated individual. All right. So keep that in mind. On Monday, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about parental mental health, which is one of the reasons why I brought up the avoidant personality.